Welcome everyone uh, to this session on React Hooks uh, and a Happy New Year to you. This happens to be the first tech talk from Devopedia for this year. Today's session is, uh, as I said, on React Hooks and introduction. So it's a beginner level talk uh, and it's delivered to us uh, by Shruti Sagar, who works as a software engineer in a company called Do Telecom in Dubai. And he has been with this company for just over a year. And before this, he has worked in a number of other companies, uh, mainly in the roles of uh, software engineer, web developer slash web designer. Uh, so if you look at his technical uh, skills, uh, he describes himself as a, I mean, uh, some of the areas of his uh, interest and expertise are Python, Flask, Django, REST API, uh, analytics, data science. Then there is, of course, uh, React and Vue. So today's topic will be related to the React ecosystem. Previously for Devopedia, I think about uh, two months back, he has delivered a talk on uh, Flask and how to use MongoDB within Flask. So that was uh, another interesting uh, you know, topic that was uh, useful uh, to our audience. So with that introduction, brief introduction, uh, I will hand over to Shruti. Of course, uh, if he wants, he can expand on that introduction. Shruti, over to you. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you, Arvind, uh, for the introduction. I think that's that is all about me. So to start with uh, React hooks in today's session, we will first see why React came into picture. So once we see why React, then probably if it would be better if we go into why React hooks. So. Yeah, React is something which is very easy to create dynamic applications uh, because of uh, like in JavaScript, we have to use uh, too many functions for accessing and all. And if you want to render a, a, some data, uh, JavaScript would take more comp uh, would be complex. So React came into picture any uh, web framework came into picture for the same. Uh, React is uh, better than probably others because of one major concept, uh, which is improved performance. So to explain about improved performance, I have one uh, separate slide, but uh, to start with, uh, to give a small up intro about it, it uses something called virtual DOM because of that, the virtual DOM, the web application loads faster. We will see how that happens in, in the one of the slides. It also has reusable component. So we can build one sample component like the base component. On top of that, we can pass properties or we can use the features that React has so that we can render whatever we want with the base component. That is where we call as reusable components. And it has unidirectional data flow, uh, which means uh, it yeah. has re, uh, unidirectional data flow, which means the data cannot be passed from uh, child to parent uh, as in Angular or Vue, which are the other two uh, frameworks that I've worked on. So the data can be passed only from the parent to the child. And it uses something, uh, it uses an HTML like JSX called JavaScript XML for rendering the data. Uh, we will see that as well in the implementation phase. So the one that I was speaking improved performance. I picked up this very specific property to explain because this is something which makes React much better than any other framework. So it uh, so DOM is when a web page is loaded, browser creates a model called document object model of the page. It has something called root element that is our HTML and others. Uh, we have head title. You can see this is how an HTML page looks like. So when the data is represented, the objects look like this. Now, what happens when a data has to be updated? The DOM has to be recreated, right? 
because when the data has to be updated, the UI has to get changed. So where in general, when that happens, the, all the elements has to be recreated. And this process of recreation is almost uh, taking same time what page load takes because all the elements are to be recreated again. And it is a time taking process because of, because of uh, the whole page gets load and it also consumes memory and pro memory for that. So what React brought into picture is a virtual DOM, which has same properties as real DOM, but it, it cannot be seen. So because it cannot be seen, it, cannot, it does not get rendered. So it's a virtual and it because it's not drawn, it gets faster. Now virtual DOM is compared with the real DOM when data is updated using an algorithm called diffing algorithm and the changed object, only the objects or the data that the components that are changed in uh, when we use uh, when the, uh, when we get the result with an diffing algorithm only those components are recreated. So how that happens is like this. So there is a state or data change and diffing algorithm checks what exactly is changed. So only those components are changed. Here we can see only when this component is updated, the child also has to get updated because the data is passed from the parent to child. So only this component, these two components are updated rather than updating the whole DOM, which makes it much faster. So this is one of the major uh, advantage of React, we can say. And the React lifecycle. So any application will have a life cycle. So when you mount an application or when you mount a component, so the first it will check uh, it will first render and then once the component is rendered, we will go through component did mount. These are the life cycles. Uh, we can see this component did mount, did update, should component update. These are the life cycle methods that React gives us so that based on with the help of these, we can make our applications much faster and efficient. So we will see what all of that now with an introduction of basic introduction to react for the people who don't know what react is. We will see what react hooks are. Hooks are, are some of the functional component function functions in react which are introduced in the one of the latest versions. Now react is some in a, around 17.5 I guess if I'm not wrong. So React is one of the very new feature built in React hooks. Re Re React hooks are new feature in React. And this is a functional component. So it is a property of function, functional component. We can have something called functional component as well as class component in React. So before React 16, func uh, functional components were said to be stateless components because we were not able to handle the state changes in functional components. So these functional components help us to hook into, hook in the sense, get into or work with the React state and lifecycle features. Uh, is it all clear till now? Wait. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. clear. Just one question. Earlier slide, you presented some uh, life cycle methods, component, yes. did mount, did update. Yes. So can, can I say that this is a somewhat restrictive way of updating the DOM, whereas React hooks gives you much more control? Yes, yes, correct. We will actually, that is part of the implementation. I wanted to tell that as well. I forgot. So okay. it helped uh, with these. Like we have these many and we will see how uh, the whole life cycle can be implemented with React hooks as well. So now 
we will see why react hooks came into picture now we know with with knowing what react hooks are we will also see why they came into picture so it is very hard to reuse stateful logic between components that means we cannot attach the data with the help of class based components uh when we example when we want to connect to a store or something so with the help of hooks that is made possible and because of uh, when we have all those life cycle methods implemented uh, each method would be different for, uh, functions in when we use class that would be very hard to maintain and it would be even hard to read and classes confuse the people who code and also it confuses the machines because uh, what happens when we use classes is that uh, because of uh, the barrier uh, when we have uh, the using the user event handlers that is when we have when we use classes we use a property called this which is a common keyword used for uh, referencing uh, in uh, referencing a uh, object of the class so when we want to do that that becomes very difficult so with that uh, even the machine gets confused and because of that the compilation time is more so in order to reduce all that uh, react hooks were introduced so the advantages of react hooks are that uh, it's are very easy, uh, react hooks are very easier to work and also to test it makes the code and the logic a very clear and it uh, because of the uh, we have a way where we can build our own custom hooks with that it makes even much better and sorry with and the code that uses hooks is more readable and uh, it i will have less number of code loc is lines of code and Uh, with the future optimizations that come up in react like uh, dead code elimination at the compile time uh, javascript minification all that hooks would be much better and uh, as i said earlier minification of uh, classes is difficult and it is uh, like you we can't minimize or minify the whole class when uh, while we can uh, minimize the functions and when we use hooks we can use the real uh, nature of react which is functional react is a functional application and we there are chances where we might write or where we may do it as a uh, anti react patterns when we use classes that is something that even very much experienced developers as also face so uh, now we will see what are the basic hooks available so there are very there are three basic hooks use state use effect use context we will see all of these three uh, in the session also we have something called use reducer use callback we will see these are the additional hooks these are the very basic hooks and these are very much necessary Uh, we also have these are we can say not very much used but these are very much helpful hooks we will see some of them also in the presentation with all this we can write a custom hook on our own for our applications when we want uh, now we shall go into the implementation before that if there are any questions or doubts we can take up so would you say that if somebody is uh, new to react and uh, they are thinking of class based approach then that is probably not recommended they are, it's better that they code using react hooks uh yes react hooks would be much better because of the advantage but yeah but to start off class based component should be very simple to do but there are places uh, where we might go wrong so yes as you said uh, it would be much better and it is an advanced feature of react when compared to 
classes it's an advanced feature of react so it would be much helpful for someone to start with that and i had one more question regarding the dom update mm -hmm. suppose you take the plain jquery approach javascript or jquery approach mm -hmm. so in javascript for example we can uh, you know uh, pick of select a specific dom element and then use a method in jquery called dot html yes you can use that method to update the dom under that tree yes so will that update the whole dom or only that particular element and the children that's one question i had is that uh, as performant as the virtual dom approach or is that much worse uh as far like i have i have read somewhere that it it also takes the same amount of time uh, uh of rendering the whole component or okay. the whole page i'm not very sure of that but what i have read like that okay I'm not okay. Uh, tested on that actually okay so it's something worth checking here yeah. i was also not sure so i just wanted to bring it up so this is the application that we have so i have built as um, we can yeah so like to play around we have built something so to start off uh so when you want to create a react app which is like we use just something a, called sorry just a little increase in the font size will be helpful yes yeah so where we use uh, something called npx so npx create react app and the app name whatever we want if we do uh the react app is created and we use uh, there are ways like we can either use no npm or yarn uh, i have used yarn in this application so when i want to run i just do yarn start so the application gets loaded um so this is how we start a react app and create a react app um so in the application what i have done is i have built few functions and uh, components basically these all are the components that i have built and we will see how each of it works we'll start with uh, the flow that i have here like we'll start with the state hook so what does state hook does state hook is one of the most important and most oftenly used hook it is used to handle the reactive data reactive data in the sense there is some data that has to be modified so we have here button click so when we click a button uh, we want to show the user number of times he clicked one of the most common use case uh, in any examples that we see this is the basic use case but generally why, why we use this is for making an api call when we want to pass the data to some different component we use this use state uh, or maybe based on the number of clicks you want to render something else or based on what the user has clicked we want to render here based on what i have clicked i am rendering a separate component here so something like that also that is where we use state and that is uh when the stay data is changed the component is re-rendered so uh, we'll see the functionality first so re a button click we have this also it can go uh, and i want to do reset right so this is what use state does when we go into the application so this is uh, from react i have to import initially then we have so this is how what it takes use state takes two param uh, it's a, it takes an array of parameters first one is the value or the variable and the function to update it so count is the variable that you can see i have used here so button clicked count times so this is jsx 
so this is exactly what i was telling this is javascript xml so we have the whole div here so set count is a function so this is u state of 0 is i am initializing the count to 0 u state and set count i am defining here set count so this is the way we write so this is like i am writing a function where i am just updating the value and the value gets updated and this co this component get gets re-rendered right so uh, i have like set count i have previous why i'm increasing the value decreasing the value we can see here so this is how we use u state very commonly uh, then updating property so this is actually an object updating object property so i want to say i want to update now i want to update name right so let's see what happens when i click on this see i updated i i the name got updated age is cleared if you can see here in the code i have written uh, so yeah first we will see object state the name is devopedia and the age is 4 and i am just rendering those values here so this is like if the value is undefined i am just going to show it is a clear the value is cleared now now see that it's not here so what is happening here is when i try to update the object age is getting rewritten so what i do i there is i just want to update the name so i am updating the name and the reset is just i'm setting the default values so now we will see what exactly i have done so first thing is the update object this one i am just return i am updating only the name but that is what is giving us the issue right so i am directly updating the whole object the other parameters or other properties of the object are ignored so just the object gets updated so in order to avoid that we am uh, we, this is an expression called spread syntax so it basically just expands the whole object and then i am updating only the name right this is one of the uh, es6 feature object uh, spread syntax it can be used against objects uh, arrays strings as well so let us reset this whatever was there earlier so this is how we use state hook and when we want to use it as a in class component I have not written for all, only for the basic ones I have written. So class component. So we in class, we already got, we have this function called this. This is the keyword which is used to specify the whole class. So we define a state here. And we are doing this dot set state. So the difference between uh, in this, we don't have to use the spread syntax because I'm specifying which property I want to update. So only that property gets updated when we use set state. So this is how class uh, we do it in a class. So there is no function defined here. Uh, it's a default available function called set state. So we use that when we use class component. Uh, with this. Uh, about state we shall move to effect hook effect hook is one of the very prominent feature of hooks this is the one that helps us to access each and every lifecycle method of an of, of a of a react component so we will see the demo first So we have to open the console. I will 
comment yes so this is the first effect what we are first feature that we are going to see so use effect so see the moment component got loaded use effect being called that is this one so every time component is rendered this happens this can be called right so now uh, and then i will click yes so but the, uh, there is one another uh, i will remove this i'll show what happens and then we can okay we have that functionality return here we this is the first feature that we should have seen so now use effect yes see every time i call i render clean up function is being called so clean up function is whenever components gets re rendered that is where we call clean up function so that's happening here clean up function so yeah how do we write is so we have component did mount feature here and we return something when we return something this is component did unmount so this is what we write here when we write return function for a use effect we call component did unmount now let us comment this and we will see what exactly this is right so when i run this only function is getting updated use effect is not called so why so here we specify the function that has to take over when use effect is called that is when component is loaded and return function is the clean up function here we specify what parameters like on what update i have to re render the component so that means i have to clean up so here uh, see we have uh, we have two objects here count and object state so i have not passed anything i have passed count here so we will see what happens when we run this so you i'll use this so i am clicking on this see whenever i do that whenever i click this uh clean up also does that means the component clean up happens component did unmount function comes into picture and then we have use effect that is the component is re rendered now the same functionality we had the, here earlier we will see see it's not happening here because we are not passing the object state if we had passed the object state we can pass all the objects so if we do this and when i do update name see we can see the use effect is being called that is where we uh, we get into the component life cycle methods with the help of use effect hook so we saw like use effect and we can render we it's like watching a value and when we watch a specific value we want some component to be re-rendered we can use this so that is how we use use effect now let's uh, the next one the next hook that we have is use context so we have an api called react context api which allows us to pass the data between the components without help of prop props props is the properties that we pass from the parent to the child now uh, we before we jump into it we already have props why do we want context the first question 
So uh, let's say there are n number of props. We can't keep pro passing that from, uh, let's say we want it to be passed to every child. We, we, are, we cannot pass it to every child. That, that uh, makes the code, uh, we can say it increases the number of lines of code and it, it also, the code looks messy and we want to update somewhere. Uh, we need to update every every place. So that is why we use a context hook. So we will see what happens when we use context hook. So we have a nested component here. So that is, this is the parent component. So uh, this, uh, the value, whatever I have here, Yes, you can see when I uh, the property is being passed. Uh, this is simple when we just pass props when you have very less number of components or when we have very less number of props data to be passed. But when we have too much of too much of data that becomes difficult as I said earlier. So now how do we do this? So we use uh, we create a uh, context called count context. So this uh, is same. We have count and we are using you set state, you state, and uh, we are uh, calling up and setting the value. And this is the child component. So nested component, uh, the count context that I have defined earlier, I'm using up that one here. Use context of count context and uh, that value I'm just displaying here. So this has been uh, placed. Uh, so this nested component is placed around this provider account context provider. That is the context provider. It uh, specifies what context I am using. And the value is uh, the count state object. That is this one. I'm just passing it down and I am just reading it here. So this is uh, like I can use n number of I can build n number of components here below this and I can just use it uh, when we. It's not in this uh, in one of the applications we had like uh, react use strict mode. So that is used as a parent uh, context and that will be rendered to the whole application. So that is where we use context hook. So uh, I hope it's clear till now. Um, yeah, that, we can pause, pause for questions. If anyone has questions, since you have covered the basic hooks. Yes. So anyone who has questions can uh, speak up. Could you go to that previous one uh, use effect? Yes, I am here. So as I understand uh, this use effect is called in uh, two situations when the component is rendered first. And then when it is destroyed, then the function in the return is called. Is it correct? Yeah. Yes, this is component did unmount. Yeah. What if uh, uh, like before rendering? Mm -hmm. I want to update the data before rendering it. What do I do in those in that case? Uh, you want to set state before rendering. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we specify it here. So I anyway, want... this use state is going to be triggered first. Yes, so I'll show this. So when I use use state and I am specifying as 100 here. So it's already updated here as 100. Uh, no, that's not what I mean. Here 100 is hard coded. Mm -hmm. What I mean is uh, in a real application that a number may be coming from somewhere else. Uh, API. Yeah, so yeah. we can use uh, we can use this function set count and update uh, it here. Yeah, yeah, OK. So we can say that set count will be called first. Then uh, that means the use state uh, hook will be called first. Then the use yes. effect hook will be called. Yes, correct. 
So some ordering is there defined in the React uh, docs or whatever text. Yes. Yes. So how is the mapping happening to which uh, visual element? You know, these these are all. Uh, you uh, state what component? So you state. Uh, 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 we have two uh, two in this array. I have two values. One is count. So this is the value which gets displayed. If you can see this one count number of times and for this state uh, for this I'm using set count. So for this count uh, uh, variable set count is the function that is used to modify the object to modify the value of the variable. No, what, what is, is the this syntax? Uh, use state is called and then it returns to variables, is it in a list? Yes. Array? Uh, no, it's actually this is a value and this is the function. So we specify it like this. So initial state and then the function that is used to update it. Now my question is this syntax const and then square bracket equals use state. This is mm -hmm. a JavaScript syntax or is invented specifically for React? No, it's a JavaScript syntax itself. This is a function just a JavaScript syntax. Yeah, so that's that's actually my question. Is it like calling the function use state, which is then returning two objects? Is that what? Yes. It yes, yes, correct. OK. No, what is the component name here? Component is the use state hook. So he's asking uh, component name. Component name is oh uh, yeah, he has given the name as use effect hook dot jsx. Ah uh, okay, that is uh, I've just copied that so yeah. we can yeah I have all the hooks here, so I'm rendering it here. Use state use effect. Hmm. This is the component. Okay, okay, thank you. So this is the page that is actually. Uh, the base page or the base component that we can see that is rendering all the other hooks. And then this looks like again, you know, yeah, it looks like me a functional components rather than, you know, conflict with classes. Yes, yes. Uh, React hooks are basically uh, majorly built for uh, it works only with uh, functional components. It does not work. If you use that in a class component, it directly throws error saying it's a class component. You can't use React hook. OK. And also, how are these hooks different than callbacks? Maybe if not now at the end of the talk. Mm, I'm also not very sure of that. Mm. I also have to check that. Maybe yeah, by the end of the session, I'll just see and let you know. Sure, thank you. So if I may answer that uh, question, you can go to that use effect hook uh, page. Mm -hmm. See, basically, it's a modified syntax. That is how I see it. It is not something that is going to be more performant than class based uh, way of writing things. It's just a cleaner syntax, less verbose, makes the code more easier to read and more maintainable. That is how I see it. So when you say uh, callbacks, you look at the return statement. That is nothing more than a callback. When the component is uh, is to be destroyed, that is called. So that is my interpretation. Yeah. No, I think yeah, the internally use effect should be a callback done by a system, the life cycle methods. Yeah, so that that wiring is done by React. Yes, that yes, is yes. when the component is uh, rendered use effect is going to be called when it is to be destroyed. The return function is going to be called. So those internal wiring as you say it is uh, standard react uh, standard JavaScript uh, stuff, right? So how do you wire from JavaScript to the react ecosystem? So that is done by the Rea react uh, uh, environment. Yes, so the react itself. So I'm directly importing all the functions from react. So ultimately it's just a syntax change. Uh, I don't think performance wise it's going to be so different from class based. Uh, I, 
uh, no because uh, because of the classes uh, what uh, like the react uh, say uh, because the less number of classes um, because when we have a class as i said uh, when you bundle it or when we build it uh, the class component because of the number of classes the number of most importantly the this keyword so for every class a different this has to be defined and that takes up more space and when you bundle so we don't have that whole concept here of class this keyword uh, that is one of the very most non understandable concept in uh, javascript you went to use which this keyword so that mm -hmm. is where what they say as uh, that is the major thing that reduces the bundling because of the less bundle uh, it uh, improves performance no, i understand bundling time compiling time what uh, but uh, does it affect the runtime also runtime improvement is there uh, yes i have seen a lot of improvement i have implemented a few and i have seen actually improve uh, better okay. version in that okay 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 we can move on i think we will take questions at the end okay so now we have a re uh, use reducer hook use reducer is something similar to what set state does but uh, instead of updating the state directly we use something called dispatch that goes into a reducer function and the function figures out what to do and how to compute so i have uh, see this is a reducer that i have defined so first i am creating a uh, uh, use reducer so we have this i am importing it and you can see use state is not uh, used here so we can say we have eliminated but uh, re use reducer is similar to what use state does so i am using uh, I built a reducer so we specify action type so we have state and then we specify action so if the action type is plus do something if it's minus do something you can set n number of types or action types and uh, uh, with this uh, we build a dispatcher uh, you can see here so uh, when we have a count state and a dispatch you can see this syntax is similar to use state but this is a reducer so this is again the variable object and this is the function so uh, if you can see uh, we'll go with the implementation then come into the code so use reducer uh, the produ uh, the count is getting updated so what happens is i'm dispatching type called plus and dispatching so what happens dispatch is the function so dispatch uh, gets count reducer so when i go into count reducer i am passing the state so what is my state uh, initial counter state or the count state so this is the initialization initial counter state is the initialization when i call the reducer which is count 0 and what i am doing i am just updating the state i am using this same property uh, spread syntax and updating the property so this is what use reducer does now also we will see how to use context api that is uh, passing the data from parent to child and uh, with the help of reducer hook also we in this we will see how to make use of uh, dispatch uh, that is a uh, reducer hook so we'll see this so i'm using i'm uh, this is a nested component where i'm switching the color so this is the functionality that we have so we have uh, i'm using color context provider so this is the context provider so we will see color context is what i have defined and the initial color state when we load this would be blue that is what i have defined here and uh, the reducer i have only one 
action type called set so and i am just updating the color right so what we will do is we are not going to use this and in the application so i am using a context uh, provider i am passing uh, the value and the function according to it so uh, this is how we uh, pass the props i am passing the state that is the color state and the property that is color dispatch color state is this one that is the reducer value and the function behind it color dispatch so color dispatch is the one that we are using to set so set and i am setting color as blue i am setting so the context is calling the function not the parent the child is calling the function and the value which gets updated here gets rendered into the child component so the color gets modified so in the this one i am just added style where i specify color as uh, the context color that is use context color context i am using that where i render the color so this is how we use uh, context and reducer both use context and use reducer together and then we have ref hook which this is also one of the important hook uh, i'll show what happens so see when i come this uh, come to this it automatically this proper this is highlighted so it is used to create a mutable object uh, that is like uh, whenever the stay uh, the value keeps changing but the difference does not re render the when the value changes like when we use state we have seen the component gets re rendered so when uh, the data has to be modified and the component is not to be re rendered like when we use it for hidden values uh, maybe when we are using for tracking when we click on this uh, we can pass it to the api space telling the user has clicked this so that is something which is not visible to the end user so that time we can use this or if this is also used when uh, to grab the html elements that is when we want to get access to html elements that is where we get to use the, you know, this is the functionality that i have shown here so use ref so i am creating a reference here use effect uh, first i am using use ref as null i i don't want anything i am just defining as null so uh, when i uh, the component is loaded that i am using use effect and current is used to specify the current object of wherever this is being used so reference of this and i am just focusing it so that is what uh, exactly the function does so the moment i you click on this this gets focused that is the input field is getting focused so we generally use this when we want like the moment user logs in we want to put him into the sign sign like the credential place uh, like that uh, we can use the user ref uh, yeah so this is about user ref uh, one last one that i have kept for today that is use memo hook so this is used for optimizing the computational cost and improve the performance this is used when we have some expensive calculations uh, let's say uh, there is some calculation done and that calculation we don't want to render the page until and unless uh, the calculation the values are changed so that is where we use memo hook uh, we need to inspect here yes so see i am clicking on here this it's calculating so i am saying uh, when i click button 1 the square root but when i want to switch it should not happen so this is one of the example maybe we can use it when we have a more complex computation 
So uh, we have use memo. It's a function. So it's a callback function where I'm just returning the count state dot uh, square root of count state dot count count state is the state that we had in the uh, count uh, refer refer use ref. It's the same thing that we have used use ref. So this one. So I'm just returning the square root of it. I I am I want to update it only when it the value gets changed. This is like memonizing that is improving the computation so that we don't have to render the document or we don't have to uh, calculate do the calculation when the values are not updated. So that is about memo hook. Uh, with this, um, the implementation is. I would like to say I have completed the implementation that we had till now. So yeah, any discussions we can take up. I heard some challenges with hooks also. Mm -hmm. uh, did you recall anywhere reading what are those challenges? Oh, uh, not sure. I've not checked that. Okay. Also, you mentioned about custom hooks. Do you have uh -huh. an example? Uh, no, I've not uh, built uh, for today's session custom hooks. I can probably I will just update in the re Git repository so that it would probably be used by anyone. Like maybe by today evening or tomorrow morning, I'll be updating that. Sure. Uh, I also understand from Ria, you know, in initially they were recommending functional components. I, uh, uh, you are not clear. Uh, can you say again? Yeah, initially they were, I mean, when, when Ria came in, our entire focus was on functional components. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, are okay. you there? Uh, the speaker has dropped off. I think he may reconnect, but you can go ahead with your question. OK, my my speaker is audible, right? Properly. Yeah, yeah. Shruti uh, has just joined. Yeah, yeah. I'm go ahead, to... Raja, with your question. OK, so what I understand in the evolution of React JS is they started with functional components. Yes, then they, uh, then they moved to, you know, for better purpose to class components. Mm -hmm. And then they are again coming back with, you know, uh, yeah, functional components. Only thing is, you know, yeah, when when hooks were not there. Yes. Uh, what, what were they doing in functional components to handle all this use, uh, you know, state, uh, use, uh, 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 what is reducer and all? No, they had class components also built uh, from the first version. They were specifying when you want to access the data or when you want to modify data and objects, you can use functional comp uh, you can use class based components. When there is uh, stateless, they were initially saying uh, react function components are stateless. That means they do not have access to state or lifecycle methods. So use so they were actually saying to use uh, classes when they want when you want access to state and component lifecycle methods and when there was no lifecycle methods uh, they would uh, when there was need of class uh, states and lifecycle methods they were recommending this but now uh, after going through the upgrades and they found that uh, it would be uh, uh, radio cost reducing that is the performance efficient with class based components itself. Uh, okay, sorry. So with the functional components itself. Yeah, yeah. So what you are saying is, you know, yeah, initially yeah, one was for stateless and other for stateful. Yes. And now, you know, even functional are supporting even stateful. Yes. Which, great. Thank you so much. Any other questions? From the audience? You can unmute your mics. Yeah, I hope I'm audible. Yeah. 
go ahead thanks for the session uh, yeah thanks for the session shruti i just wanted to know uh, do you have any experience of using web assembly with uh, react hooks uh we are not clear which one web assembly uh, with react hooks have you used I, it no no i have not used okay are you using web assembly shivraj in any particular uh, and what language are you using right now no just now exploring that uh, okay, just to improve okay. the performance of some applications i was just exploring on that part okay okay fine yeah. so shivraj any other questions please yeah shivraj are you saying you know web assembly you know uh, using javascript or you know generally what i understand web assembly is yeah you can write a performance code with c c++ and bring it into uh, convert it into web application but yes correct, correct. Uh, uh, i thought maybe my understanding of web assembly is yes you and you build entire web application and then that can uh, in the in the c c++ and then that can be launched independently but now what you are asking is can i write part of react application on you know on c c++ and through web assembly can i get it into react is that your question correct 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 okay from my knowledge uh, what should be possible is that uh, let's assume you have an application where some of the computation have to be done on the browser that means you cannot offload the computation to the server but on the browser traditionally you are limited with javascript which has a certain uh, runtime uh, inefficiency let's assume so you can uh, make those computations in another language let's assume c++ but c++ has to run within the browser so that is where web assembly comes in so let's assume in the context of react hook uh, shruti presented a number of uh, hooks Uh, basically these hooks translate to a function call and we are as a developer we de- define those functions so now one of those functions could be a, a call into a web assembly web assembly execution all right yeah so it may not be a direct call you still call the javascript function which indirectly then uh, it becomes a wrapper over the web assembly that's that's right that's right yeah i, I mean, just want to know is saying uh, that this is how it is this is my uh, expectation as a experienced developer this is my educated guess i think this is how it should it would function yeah you're right you're right so i just wanted to check if uh, you know so or anyone in the audience has uh, you know done uh, i mean has got any experience okay. that i could learn from yeah any further questions Shruti, you have any other points to cover, or are we done? I uh, I think we are done. I have completed all that I had for today. Okay, okay. So thank you so much, Shruti, for delivering the session. You started in a very simple way, uh, introducing the simple concepts in React, and then went on to introduce React hooks uh, for beginners. From my side, uh, the advice would be to start with the basic hooks. get familiar with it uh, get uh, handle on how to use it properly then you can move on to the advanced uh, hooks and uh, uh, this uh, session will be uploaded to our youtube channel shortly maybe in an hour and that uh, upload will also contain a link to the github repo where this uh, the code that you saw today will be available to you